They confess that they know God but in their works they deny it. 15 April, 2024 Anno Domini. Official publication of the Holy Apostolic See of Rome, in exile, by His Holiness Pope Jacobus I, on the subject of the pretenders and impostors to the Holy Catholic Priesthood and Episcopate, who are all ipso facto, and declared by the Holy See, excommunicated heretics, including the novice ordo apostate sectarians, all of which are serving their master the devil, leading countless souls into hell, by their fabricated heretical false doctrines which these heretics have no authority to disseminate nor proclaim in the first place, stay away from them as far as possible. Those then who reject or otherwise refuse to help the Holy Mother Roman Catholic Church, to continue her divinely given mission of salvation of souls, such heretics are not Catholic, they are excommunicated as sacrilegious helpers of Satan in his evils to destroy as many human souls as possible, they are thus also giving aid to the devil in his diabolical attacks against the genuine and only Roman Catholic Church, and this holy apostolic see, for which, such heretics, will pay to God very dearly, soon, and also in hell forever, if they die in such a deplorable reprobated state of their soul. They confess that they know God, but in their works they deny it. And this publication today is about the heretics and the struggling and the difficulties of the Holy Mother Church, represented solely and only by this Holy Apostolic See, because the rest of them are heretics. And evidently so, it is this last hour and the time of the Antichrist approaching and the devil sabotages our publications and he doesn't want this to be published we had a great difficulty today just to set it up and prepare and everything we are greatly delayed and uh, we just hope to make it on time to uh, be able to finish this publication properly and so it's posted although we don't see much of a changes in regards to these people who claim to be Catholic. They use the name of Catholic, holy name of Catholic, and then they produce works of heresy, apostasy, make their own conclusions, follow directions that they read somewhere on the internet, published by laymen who has no who have no authority obviously to declare anything doctrinal or theological or they quoting publications of popes and taking them out of context and including in there the publications of the Novus Ordo sect and then they think that they somehow will be held guiltless and that's not true. Laymen cannot teach matters of faith and morals that belongs to the Holy Mother Church, Church Magisterium that's exercise of the power of the keys granted by God to the Apostles and among them most and foremost the first Pope St. Peter and transferred by succession to the popes that followed, including our person at this present time as a rightful and true Roman pontiff. Therefore, by our apostolic authority, we condemn these practices of these heretics, as we have condemned and this holy apostolic see has condemned them before in uh, specific terms and so forth in our canons and of anathema. Uh, and so there's not much that can be added in that subject except the excerpts for how these people continue in their evils and how they present themselves dressed as priests, yet they denying the very fact that they uh, supposed to teach the truth, they denying it in their works and teach the opposite, contradictions, heretical falsehoods, lies, outright distortions. Uh, they truly serve the devil 
in their works and not God. So we will, we have three excerpts and some scriptural reference today in this publication, and uh, it's almost notorious. These people have desecrated their own places or never have them properly consecrated, or they say uh, the mass and private houses, which is not the mass, and then it's visible on that video and that they publish widely, wide, widely published on the internet um, that, that they don't even understand what is essential for a sacrament to take place because they are not true priests. And they never obtained the priesthood. Most of them emanated from that progeny order of this so-called society from past the tent, which was never approved by the Holy Mother Church was approved by the novice of the sect in 1970. That was the work of Archbishop Lefebvre, notorious heretic, who was excommunicated prior to that. So there's no continuation of the church. There's no, no apostolic succession because of, uh, Archbishop Lefebvre, by being heretic and tied with the novice of the sect and recognizing them as some, somehow authority, he excommunicated himself long ago before that. And so he was instrumental in these changes to cards some heretical things in there in his publications and so uh, we have demonstrated this many times in our publications it's just that's how it started and that the progress was made the acceptance of the changes in Roncalli in 1962 for the Pontificar Romanum and uh, which he dared to publish and, and uh, then everything else follows and of course the conclusion of the set of Acontis heretics because they play on the uh, intellect, human intellect, that necessarily follow common sense, what they call it, and not the doctrine of the church. In that regard, regarding papacy, because in that regard, they disregard, they disregard thoroughly disregard the safeguards of the papacy, which uh, prevent heretics ever to ascend to, to the seat of St. Peter, to the, to the chair of St. Peter, and possess the keys to the kingdom of heaven, because the keys, that's the assistance of the Holy Ghost. It's not in literal sense to have keys or anything, but the doctrine that the Pope possesses, the guidance of the Holy Ghost, that the proper doctrine is, is taught and declared, and contrary uh, doctrines, false doctrines, heretical doctrines are thoroughly condemned and properly condemned for the protection of souls and protection of what is entrusted to the Pope, the divine deposit of faith, which was transmitted by the Apostles taught by Christ our Lord and transmitted by the Apostles. And none of these people have that guidance. None, not one of them. Why? Because they are heretics. They belong to the devil and they serve him. And these are the works that we will present and today just among so many what we have already published before. But these are the works that these evildoers, these truly excommunicated heretics, imposters to the Holy Catholic priesthood, and higher obviously uh, they just continue so the first one will be from uh, the subject of uh, the notorious heretic uh, William Jenkins of the Society of Sympathy the Fifth and Jenkins he uh, is currently in Rome he is currently in Rome and uh, on so-called pilgrimage and he visited the desecrated and no longer in possession of the Holy Mother Church, Basilica of St. Peter in the Vatican. And uh, that's no longer Basilica to begin with because it's just, it's desecrated. It's a museum tourist attraction that the Novus Ordo made it into. And so the video is telling uh, how, and he st stands there in front of it and inside and speaks to the children there that he took for the pilgrimage, the, the young people, and he's like a tourist guy. And he doesn't tell them, this place is desecrated, we shouldn't be here, we cannot enter. Just remember, it's run by the Novus Ordo sect. I cannot take you in here because I was feared God's punishment. Because there's, there's, there's nothing left in there. There's just, it's just, it's a, it's open corridor, a huge place, and people just walk back and forth and look at the, Paintings on the ceilings and the, the, the art, um, um, the, the sculptures and all kinds of things that are there. 
and uh, that's about it. He's not even showing whether there is altar, where's the altar, and if there's any altar left, if they just bring in the nose out of the table, if they just say it somewhere else, whatever they say, which is their common practice to begin with. So if it's just for visitation, and that's it. If they do anything in there, in that place to begin with, which they just want to destroy the church, so that's what they do. That's, that's, these are communist agents, people who don't fear God's punishment, including Bergoglio, who had long history, has long history, of communist connections in his native uh, Argentina. So they are there to destroy the, um, the mockers of, uh, of God and, and so forth as written in the Holy Scripture. And they have saw some, uh, uh, St. John speaks about it, the, the many Antichrists, the Paddy the heretics and the heretics and so forth, up until the time of the Antichrist. St. Paul speaks about it in various places. St. Jude speaks about it. St. Peter speaks about it. The New Vatican quote tourist guide unquote, in the novice ordo apostate sect stolen and totally desecrated and now a tourist attraction, formerly known as Basilica of St. Peter, the ipso facto excommunicated SSPV heretic William Jenkins. Stay away as far as possible from these heretics, imposters to the holy Catholic priesthood. Now, one thing that's important for you to notice to orient yourself when we go down the basilica, we go to that con confessional area of St. Peter, we're not going to be able to go down the steps. We don't need to. Why? Because as you look down there, you're going to look in the, what is called the Clementine Chapel, after Pope Clement, I forget which one. A, an, what they call an ascensore, which is an elevator, okay? You see something called ascensore, it should be easy for you to recognize. Oh, ascend, that's the elevator, okay? That's what you're going to take, but you can only take it up to the midpoint, the base of the dome. And it lets you off more or less at the base of the dome. Base to take all the way to the very top and you come out and you're actually overlooking the city from the top of St. Peter's Basilica, okay? You're looking at the dome there, okay? Uh, you're going to see 50 feet in the air about the size of a 40-story building. And it's a pile of rocks held together like by iron pikes. That's it, you know? Um, but it's uh, a labor of love, we hope. By the way, there are four enormous chapels. I doubt you'll be able to get in them. They're only open certain days. But also within those, those uh, 60 by 60 foot pillars, there's a stairway. It lost the basilica style, but uh, it grew also because of the multitude of people who would have to be here. So just to comment on that, um, you can see that he's got, he's got the Novus Ordo uh, insert. That's not priestly color. It has to be around the, the neck all the way around. He's got that insert in there. He studied at Novus Ordo sect in Rome. So he knows Rome very well. And so we'll let it play uh, just to show that the, what we were saying about how desecrated that place is because it's just truly a museum, it's just horrifying. So let us play it real quick. Yeah. And they say he just says something that we don't even want to say and it, more or less to, to record this. Uh, and you can see, we'll get off really so it's visible. Uh, you can see that there are just people walking uh, and uh, watching over the artifacts, how great it is, the, 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 the art and, and all this. They just walk around, women in pants. Uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And this is why he brings the young people to be and to, to just simply enjoy themselves, this evildoer. This heretic, excommunicated, apostate, joy, enemy of the church, who was part of the sect, and he just thinks that he can go away with it. That's a museum. People just walk by and record things. This is, this is church, and not for walking around and watching the ceiling and, and so forth, or watching what it looks like and... 
And, but he's doing the, the work of the sack. That's what the sack does. This right here. That's a, that's a, you can't even tell that this is, a, this is a church. You can't even say that this is a church. How can you say that this is a church? It's un in uh, incredible. So this is Montini. And now uh, Montini was a uh, excommunicated heretic. And uh, so this is him among the six Protestant ministers who instituted the help uh, concoct the Novus Ordo mockery of God, Protestant re reenactment, heretical, idolatrous reenactment of the Last Supper. And that's not the true holy sacrifice of the Mass. Montini was never a valid pope. He was just excommunicated Monsignor who betrayed the church and had contact all the way to the Russian Bolshevik Kremlin. So he had contacts with the Russian communists behind the back of Pius XII. And that's why Pius XII forced him out. And that's very hard to find that this information, but it's true. Montini did so much evil to the church and he is burning in hell forever because they cannot absolve themselves. They don't have authority. Heretics cannot absolve. And, and uh, he just perverted completely as much as he could. And he's paying for it in hell forever. So this is, I will go a little further right here. That's about the, uh, the temptation there in the, in the practice. Uh, then of these, when our Lord speaks about this is from St. Mark, and it was in chapter 11, and that's the comment on it. If the temple was then a den of thieves because of profane and secular merchandise, how much more now? And this is this publication from 1630. This print is from 1635. Anno Domini. This was the people who escaped England during the persecution of the, uh, which started under uh, King Henry VIII, excommunicated himself and so forth, and his daughter Elizabeth I, and and so forth. All the rest of them. So they had to escape and and uh, in the north of France, in order to save their lives because the state was running the, the, the religion as it is and perverted it so badly and became Protestants, all England. So uh, it says, how much more now when it says, so that refers to those times, but it's apparent, apparently and visibly com the, comparable to the times that we live today, because the church is no longer in, in, in Rome, that the church is in hiding outside of Europe. How much more now when the house appointed by, uh, for the holy sacrifice and sacrament of the body of Christ made a den, is made a den for the ministers of Calvin's bread. And that's what that says. So this is what will happen to them. This is from Apocalypse 11. We thank thee Lord God omnipotent who art and which was and which shall come because thou hast received thy great power and hast reigned and the Gentiles were angry and thy wrath is come and the time of the death to be judged and to render a reward to thy servants, the prophets and saints and to them that fear thy name, little and great and, this, and to destroy them that have corrupted the earth. That's the judgment of God upon heretics. So then we will go to second excerpt, which is even more significant. Because that excerpt is about Catholic education. And that's from Jenkins. Again. And uh, Jenkins has decided that he will disseminate. We'll let it play in the entirety because but to, to show how it is, not so much as once he mentions the name of catechism or Catholic education, what it entails, that people, as it's the supernatural help of God and infused knowledge into the soul, the understanding and all that. He made it sound like in that excerpt that somehow a human soul is capable of producing it himself, which is heresy. That's, that's condemned teaching. It was condemned by, uh, by the Vatican Council on the Pope Pius the Pius nine in eighteen sixty nine to eighteen seventy. So they insinuating sometime somehow 
that by human in ingenuity or endeavor, some uh, one can con uh, come to the conclusions that are revealed by God, which is impossible. The gift of faith is gift of gift of gift of Catholic faith, which is nothing else but the Catholic tradition. That gift comes from God. That means the understanding of the faith has to come from Him. But those who are humble and those who are truly Catholic, willing to be Catholic, God will give them the grace to understand properly the doctrine that the Church has to, uh, always taught. And so it's not possible to come to your own study and come to it because then necessarily that will follow that the Protestants will be capable of doing it. And precisely because they are sin cell and all these heretics, they are self-invited teachers or mockers of God in regards to this Jenkins and the rest of them, then they don't possess the guidance of the Holy Ghost and they cannot come to conclusions and understanding that the church comes to. Because the assistance of the Holy Ghost is not with them and never will be. Once they are reconciled with the church, of course, they will not be able to exercise any teaching authority or anything in that regard, which is just members of the laity, if, that, if such, such possible is possible even in the sense of their being so full of pride that it's highly unlikely God very seldom will never give his grace to such people who are his enemies. So we'll go ahead and play it. SSPV Heretic Jenkins unquote Catholic education unquote, he omits the essential term catechism, which must be taught to the children and adults, faithfully and punctually, heretics are excluded. Do not let these heretics educate your children. Could you speak a few words on the importance of Catholic education and what exactly is meant by Catholic education? The true idea of education looks at education uh, as leading out of darkness into, into light, and the light being knowledge and understanding. Right? And so the idea is to form the human mind. Our, our minds are a tabula rasa, as St. Thomas Aquinas and the scholastic uh, philosophers and theologians understood. We don't have innate ideas that we're born with. We have to be taught. We, we have to learn. Uh, we learn from interacting with the world around us. And uh, gradually we form ideas of reality and truth. We have to be educated in the sense that we have to learn. And in order to learn, generally we have to be taught. Okay? You can plainly see that it's to him it's up to, the, up to the human endeavor to obtain the gift of faith. So he doesn't even comment on it in the sense of that it is true a gift of God. And uh, that's, that's, that's a heresy, that's, that's impossible to attain to. Because divinely revealed, he speaks about we have to be taught. Well, by whom? How? It, it is God's grace that works in that soul. You can learn it from reading catechism. But the understanding has to be enlightened by the, by the divine grace. In that case, when that soul is chosen by God, or is sincere, rather to put it this way, and wants to become truly Catholic, that understanding will be enlightened to the, to the level that God permits, and then the Church is teaching that soul what is the, the proper doctrine of salvation. But these people, they, they are doing the opposite. They, they're going the wrong way. They're teaching falsehood. What he just said is a heresy. It leads to heresy. It's, it's not possible to attain to the understanding of the revealed faith, divinely revealed faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, without the help of God. It's impossible. And this is in forward doctrine that is exercising of our apostolic office. So then there's no possibility of anybody trying to refute this or contradict it. So be careful when you pass judgment on this, even internally. And uh, this was taught by our predecessors of blessed memory of time immemorial. So it's, it's, that's the proper doctrine recorded in the Holy Scripture. That you cannot attain to the understanding unless God helps the soul to, to do it, to obtain it. And it's, a, it's his, his gift. But these people are negating it by these false doctrines. So it's not just a matter of uh, letting feral children run around to whatever they personally find of interest. 
at any given moment, it really is a matter, in terms of Catholic education, of guiding their minds, guiding their thoughts in the right direction. The ultimate goal, of course, is to form those who have faith and hope and charity, those who know God by faith, through true faith, and that is the, the Catholic faith, and to know and place their hope in our Lord and to love our Lord, to love God. As our Lord said, the Father loves you because you love me. And so we have to teach them about our Lord Jesus Christ in the first place so that they can know who the Father is and know who the Holy Ghost is. They can know who the God who created them is, the blessed trinity of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And they know that they are loved and they are able to respond with love. So it's a matter of forming the conscience too. So it's not just a matter of teaching them truth in the abstract. Uh, there's the moral dimension of giving them not only knowledge, but also love, forming the intellect and forming the will. Now, in the classical education idea, the, the first thing that our brains are made to, to do is to learn information, to learn about reality and the reality that we encounter, we encounter through our senses here in the world. We learn about these things, but our, our minds, because of the spiritual soul, take in these truths and we learn these things in a very different way from that of the animals, the mere animals who have no souls. We begin to enter into a deeper understanding of these things because of the use of reason. St. Thomas Aquinas and the scholastics tell us that uh, by the power of reason we have the ability to understand things in their causes. That separates us from the animals who have no immortal. Yes, but what does it have to do with Catholic education? How is it Think to when that soul wants to be truly Catholic, God will help that soul, yes. But then it, it's not that the soul can come to it and pass judgment on it. It has to be accepted on faith. And that means faith and means the belief that God is and believe that on his authority rests the doctrine of salvation, which is the divine deposit of faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition. And if people so, so, summarize something else and, and make it look like that, we can come to conclusions of our own and then make the determination what the proper uh, doctrine of salvation is. Or it doesn't even use this, the term doctrine of salvation or, or divine deposit of faith or uh, any of this. Uh, for catechism in that whole excerpt, that's very short excerpt what they published. It's on their website and it's short as it is. Not once he uses the term catechism. So then these people must not be allowed to educate anybody because they don't have the guidance of the Holy Ghost. Look at what he's capable of saying. He's repeating himself. They had to cut off the, you can see that now and then it jumps and goes forward and back and so forth. Now, uh, he repeats himself. And then he goes into some other stuff. He says so many words, and there's not that edifying part. It's, it's just, it doesn't direct the souls that might listen to him to do the right thing. It's just not the, uh, re leading that soul to the conclusion, or at least giving that soul to the, co the conclusion that needs to be followed. That means a proper doctrine that has to be followed functionally so that that soul is protected. And then God will give the supernatural grace so that's the faithful soul of faithful Catholics. But otherwise, to heretics, no, that doesn't happen. And no matter how much they try, how hard they try to attain to the knowledge and understanding of what needs to be uh, professed and practiced and believed in order to save one's soul, um, no matter if there's one little item of her heresy, God will leave that's those souls in darkness and they will just stumble over things and unless he has mercy on them and, and uh, brings them to the church and, and helps them to convert. But that's what he says. It's just it's, it's, it's just illustration that he doesn't possess the guidance of the Holy Ghost, period. Spiritual souls, that we can understand things in their causes. And you see this even in little children. And they progress toward the age of reason. You see the beginning to activate the ability to understand things in their causes. And when they reach the age of reason, their conscience then becomes active. That's the, what, they, what they call the practical reason, uh, practical judgment. 
practical in the sense that it has to do with action, of right and wrong. This is all a part of the educational process. The ipso facto, and declared by the Holy See, excommunicated SSPXMC heretic David Hugo, here has the audacity to blame a valid Pope Pius XII for changes that evidently came without his knowledge, in secret and done by the agents of communism infiltrated into high places of the Vatican itself, behind Pope Pius XII back, as he previously condemned such inventions. I never do the dialogue mass. The dialogue mass was one of the steps towards the new mass. And it got everybody participating and, and talking during the mass. And the dialogue mass is it's just not part of our Catholic tradition. So <clears throat> say what you want about Pius XII approving it. Uh, maybe he did, but he also did a few other mistakes as well. And Pope Pius XI and Pope Pius XII made some big blunders that hurt the church. So you can hear that he accuses two popes, two popes of blunders, big blunders. But what are they? He doesn't say really. He just says that they didn't consecrate Russia afterwards. Well, Pius XII in fact consecrated the world uh, or consecrated, consecrated, in fact, consecrated Russia, but by himself. He didn't ask the, the rest of the bishops to participate in a consecration re requested by Our Lady of Fatima. These people control the, the, the information. It's very hard to obtain how exactly it happened, and there's no way to determine properly. But if Pius XII, obviously, if he knew that he's supposed to do it, but the, he would be summoning the bishops to do it uh, uh, with himself. And he, he obviously thought that he can do it by himself. And so that's the history of it. So what he asserting here, he speaks about the, the changes. Then he speaks about Bonini that may have perhaps had something to do with it. Well, Pastor Tell, he condemned the whole thing to go into innovations and go back to what the church uh had in the beginning to go to the beginnings of the church because then obviously it would negate the 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 necessary parts that were put into the ceremonies and so forth for devotional purposes that were then promulgated and therefore canonized and protected by the church authority and so they cannot go back and delete them or, or deny them that they exist unless it's something disciplinary or liturgical uh, Discipline that is uh, regarding the rubrics and so forth of newly canonized saints. That's different matter, obviously, but that's understood. But not that's but what the, the Novus Ordo sect has done. They perverted everything fundamentally, and that is not not only invalid and null, but it's heretical because it denies the authority of the church. Pope has no such authority to to declare new new ways. We have put that sign in there, but then it comes off, and you can see that he doesn't have even the altar cloth. That's not it's just an ordinary table. He says it's somewhere in a private house. It's some kind of statue up on that shelf up there, which is that's not how, how chapel should be. At least he could have, have some pins, and if it's a uh, sheet rug, he should put some pins in there, some cloth to cover that whole place, and so have it done as, as, as a mess. It doesn't have a cross in front of the of that table. That's a table. That's not how it's supposed to be done. And it's not fully covered. Because in the, you will see that it's, when that sign comes up, it shows that that's, that's the end where that sign begins on top. That's the end of that cloth altar on, on, that, on that table. And that's it. There's no cross. That nullifies the intention of that person. He has the varieta which should be coming off at the beginning. And he should, shouldn't get it back until at the end when he walks away. And uh, so it's just, just those are perverted things that these people are just perverting the faith and the, the church, the, the, the sacraments, everything else. So there's no way that, that this is just a proof, among others, that these people are not guided by the Holy Ghost because they would fear God's punishment if they did something like this. That's how they deny. And that works that they know God, they love God, they don't love God, they love the devil. Church 
although they were good popes. They made some big mistakes, and I think it was God permitted it because they did not consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. They should have done it. If Imagine if Pope Pius XI or Pius XII had made the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, there would not have been a Vatican II. We would be in the glorious age of Mary. It'd be, the United States would never, it would be a Catholic country, pretty much. There'd be no abortion laws and no uh, perversion of the young, <clears throat> nothing like that. Large, healthy Catholic families, the monasteries would be full, convents full, seminaries full. It would be the age of Our Lady. But they didn't do it. <coughs> and Pius XII had many graces and miracles from heaven to urge him to do the consecration. He never did it. He started off as the Pope of Fatima, he ended up the, very sickly, and under his, under his five years, he was very sickly, and it's assumed it is uh, possible that Bonini did his dirty work, especially when Pope Pius XII was very sick for the last five years of his pontificate. So here you can see that there's just a table. That's not how the, that's just, that's preposterous, that's just, this is how, not how it is done. This is somewhere in North Carolina in the United States. Uh, so, uh, this person is an imposter, he doesn't feel God's punishment. What he says, he blames it on Bonini. Well, Bonini was just one of the many. He was part of the, the, the he didn't do it by himself. They were all involved in it. Not all of them exactly, but all that were so evil. So there were quite a few of them, quite, a, quite, a, quite many of them. This, these people have perverted everything and distorted the truth. He is, has the audacity, this horrible heretic, to blame a valid pope of some uh, disregard of the protecting, the, the, because he, in fact, by doing this, he accuses Pius XII of heresy because the neglected papal office and to allow people to fall into heretical errors or denial of what the church is supposed to do, which in fact Pius XII did consecrate Russia, but by himself, without the bishops. And he was deceived. Yes, he was very ill, but he was deceived by those who transmitted him to mess the message, which were already the enemies of the church, most certainly communist agents. The synagogue of Satan, that it speaks about. So they, these people are distorting the truth purposely. They they hated Father Pius XII. They hated him so much. And they are doing it after his death, so many years after his death. And they're still doing it because they don't want him to be seen as Troy Pope that was surrounded by enemies of the church. He was Troy prisoner in the Vatican, as it is. And God knows what they pl plotted against him, against his because to have chronic hiccups, and, uh, which is unusual, and then he miraculously recovered from it. And then he died of heart attack all of a sudden, which is a calling card of the, of, of the poisonous attack as it is. So we don't know exactly, but uh, they wanted to get rid of him so badly that to open the door for Roncalli and for the rest of them. That, and then Roncalli allowed... Uh, members of the KGB Iran, Russian Orthodox, to be present at the Second Vatican Gathering of Heretics, which another, that's, that's just simply no, no possible way to allow them to St. Peter to participate in any of this, as observers he called it. No, there's no possibility, that's reserved to the political state of the church, the bishops and higher, and that's it. So, but these, these are the evil fruits of evil trees. And this Yuko and the rest of them, Jenkins and Sanborn and the rest of them, the Varunas, and SSPX as a, as a whole, as it is, and Williamson and all the rest of them, they are all in it. Every single one of them is in it, and we have illustrated in our publications. They are all heretics. Which means he, you know, got 
signatures from the Pope approving things that would prepare for the new Mass. And one of those is the Dialogue Mass. So I remind you, just uh, the altar boy only responds in this Mass. Only the altar boy, nobody else. As it can be seen, these people are dis destroying, destroying the Catholic faith as it is. In conclusion of this publication today, we would like to say a few words on the subject of what we have illustrated in the beginning. Because uh, people truly think that they will get away with uh, supporting our enemies and, and not helping the church. And God will not tolerate this much longer. Not that he is the one that he's supposed to help them to recover. But precisely because they remain in heresy and they don't wish to hear the truth. He's allowing them to fall and he's allowing them to be with the devil and he's allowing them to fall into these heretical publications and falsehoods. And uh, the devil obviously makes use of them. This is from Apocalypse chapter 12 and a great sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet on her, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. And being with child, she cried also, traveling and is traveling and is in anguish to be delivered. And there was seen another sign in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, that when she should be delivered, he might devour her son. And she brought forth a man child, and who was to govern all nations in an iron rod. And her son was taken up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she shall. She had a place prepared of God, that there might, there they might feed her a thousand two hundred sixty days. The woman does by illusion the church. That notation over there, on the left hand side, and says the dragon incredulous and uh, incredulous and persecuting multitude and antichrist, the chief head thereof. This is a properly and principally spoken of the church and by illusion about blessed, our Blessed Lady also. So that the persecution shall be at that time when uh, of, of the Antichrist, obviously. And uh, so these enemies of the church striving to destroy the church, that's the synagogue of Satan, that's the Communist Party, Especially in Russia, we have spoken about this. And this is about the, the last times, this Apocalypse 20. And when the thousand years shall be consummate, and when the thousand years shall be consummate, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go forth and seduce the nations that are upon the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and shall gather them into battle, the number of whom us is as the sand of the sea. They ascended upon the breadth of the earth and encompassed the camp of the saints in the beloved city. And there came down fire from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil which seduced them was cast in the pool of fire and brimstone where both the beast and the false prophet shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. At the end, God will punish those who do us evil and that the Antichrist will not succeed because it's spoken about three and a half years of darkness, of religious persecution, horrible persecution by these atheistic communists. They will conquer the world and they are very near to it. In every, every country they have taken hold of their, of the secular governments and so forth, and the church is truly driven into, into uh, catacombs, and there are not people who will remain in all this. But that doesn't alter the uh, the obligation of the church as it is, because the church continues 
the mission of salvation of souls. And obviously, the church cannot do otherwise but to continue. These are the canons that prevent the people to be uh, reconciled with the church unless they first realize that they are true heretics, obviously. So they are excommunicated, it's a fact of reserve to the Holy See, speciali modo, and they, those are all apostates from the Christian faith or heretics in schismatic canon 2314, 1917, Code of Canon Law. And uh, it is forbidden to minister the sacraments of the church to heretics and schismatics, even though they are in good faith and ask for them, unless they have first renounced their errors and been reconciled to the church. Canon 731, 1917, Code of Canon Law. There's no such thing as admitting them into, into mass or anything, as the SSPX heretics do and the rest of them. So it's, it's just simply not permitted to accept somebody from the novice or the sect to ask for first those, that person or those people of during their house is being uh, examined whether they truly understand the faith and believe it and profess it and know the faith, which means catechism. And uh, that means the, mainly the catechism of the Council of Trent, not some new catechism properly produced by the novels of the sect. That's not the criteria, there's heretical falsehood in it. And so um, that's Canon 188. Those people, are, they don't have, uh, but today that doesn't apply really because they never had the FICA offices, including Isuko and the rest of them. So, uh, that the sacraments cannot be changed, this Council of Trent, not even by the Pope. But in Vianatema, if anyone said that the receiving and approved rights of the Catholic Church want to be used in the solemn administration of the sacraments, may be contempt or without sin be omitted at pleasure by the ministers or be changed by every pastor of the churches into other new ones, so letting me an atom, that means cursed and excommunicated. And this is Comex Apostatus Officio, point number six, valid in perpetuity of Paul IV, 1559, Anno Domini. As you can stop and read it, because it's, it will be too long if we go. We have illustrated in this publication the necessity of people to be Catholic. And truly Catholic, that means practicing Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition. So then, if they are incapable of realizing this, if they are truly unable to do the first step, that means God is not helping them. That means the devil is holding them as slaves, as hostages, and they cannot move forward until God helps them to do it. They have to have the desire to truly obtain the truth and truly be reconciled with the church, to be obedient to this Holy See, and to continue. We have not asked for this office. God gave it to us. We don't deserve it either, but we have obtained it by the mercy of God. And we are bound to teach this truth and to warn about the dangers to salvation to those who may listen. But today there are very few who will listen because they either are with the heretics recognizing the non-Catholic sect as Catholic, which is horrifying sacrilege, or they are with the sort of a countess heretic. Or they stay home and think that somehow they will be good trees bearing good fruit, and they are fruitless. The church is in need of help, and but we don't say it as a as a uh, somehow the request as a precept of the church and divine law. So those who will not help us to continue the mission of salvation of souls, we will endure the consequences of that uh, lack of proper assistance and so forth. God will always help us, of course, with the scarcity and all these difficulties and we have and all this how the devil is persecuting us, to be hampering even this very publication. We have to still edit it and all this, so it's not that simple as it is to produce it. And we have very limited time to produce it. And, uh, but he doesn't want, the devil doesn't want this to be published. He sabotaged it today so badly that he truly had to spend extra time to fixing all those things that the devil was hampering from producing and so forth. So then, unless people are truly willing to be Catholic, now as God, unless God has mercy on them, they will not be helped, and God will not help them. They will have to suffer the consequences of their denial of the truth, of the real truth, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, and most of all, also of, the deni of their denial and refusal of obedience, which is 
the, the obedience, the Holy See is the dogma of the church. It is essential for salvation to be subject to the true Pope. And that's Unam Sanctum, and Sikuk Unam Sanctum of Boniface VIII, our predecessor of Boniface VIII of Blessed Memory. And uh, among other things, obviously, part of the reveal of faith, obey your prayers, says St. Paul. Obedience to heretics is mortally simple and is a sin of sacrilege and is giving consent to their heresies that makes one a heretic if they don't take care of what these heretics are teaching. We have not spared one moment to, to explain to the to people who may watch this that these people are heretics. They are truly outside the church. They are truly serving the devil. They are leading souls to hell. And the novice of the sect, that's, there's no need to go through countless, as the heretics do, as St. Paul goes through all these kind of uh, examinations what they teach, instead of saying, that's non Catholic sect, we don't have nothing to do with them, and they are, they are semi-Protestant communist agents using the Protestant angle and, and Protestant ceremonies, which are not Catholic, there's not Catholic mass what they have, that's the Protestant reenactment of the Last Supper, there's a the man is facing the uh, the people and showing them the Last Supper. I mean, that's not holy sacrifice of the man. That's an abomination what they have, an abomination to God, horrifying sacrilege for which they will pay to God in hell if they die in such a state of their soul. To recognize them as Catholic is horrifying sacrilege, which does not, this, this SSPX, heretics, and the rest of them, they do it. And anytime they use the term Pope, and they apply it to non-Catholic sect, that's a sacrilege also, because there's denial, heretical denial, of the safeguards the Church possesses, among which we have illustrated Canon 2214, Canon 188 for number 4, defection from the Catholic faith, severs the cleric from the Catholic uh, office, but it doesn't apply to them because they never were part of today, because that time lapse is over 60 years, so it, they never were part of the Catholic Church. They never obtained the Catholic office in the Catholic Church. They were brought up in the in the non-Catholic sect. So there's no Catholic office in the Church. Why? Right? Just because they call themselves whatever they call themselves doesn't make any difference. They are still outside the Church, and they cannot have they cannot be called that way because that's in the sense of the Catholic Church. They cannot be that term. Um, that Catholic office, that dignity, cannot be used in their uh, in that regard. That's how you recognize these heretics because they're using it in order to deceive serve the devil, to somehow put two different religions, one, the true faith, which is Catholic tradition, that the rest, that the, 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 the Protestant recommend all the last suffering, that there's no sort of sect, and also recognize the sect, the heretics, uh, perverted the, using the fraudulent 1962 missile, which is invalid, and so that negates their priesthood, like the SSPX heretics do, like Archbishop Lefebvre was doing, obviously, and so these people are not priests. That's a defect of intention that have changed, substantially changed ceremonies. That's a defect of intention during ordination. That person is not a priest, period. You cannot, or that's, that's the principle is vested with the encyclical and obviously in divine law as it is in canon law, but encyclical of our predecessor of blessed memory, Leo XIII, and Apostolic Aikurai, uh, condemning the and nullifying, obviously, the kind of null and void the younger can write so-called rights of ordination. It's just, it's, so that's the same principle. So it's vested there, and there's no, no way around it. This, this, that's how it is. That's the infallible doctrine. That's to be obeyed in conscience, which Archbishop Lefebvre did. He accepted those changes and took them for his own, and uh, then he used them for that so-called ordination, that those defects in his uh, so-called seminary in Econ Switzerland, they prove it. He didn't have the guidance of the Holy Ghost. He had heretical items there and, and, and thought heresy. So the Holy Ghost is not with heretics. And they, con they cannot confer graces in the sacraments. And they cannot absolve of sins. Because God will not grant them the grace. It is necessary, essential for the good absolution, for valid absolution, to obtain the grace of God. And God will only give it to his church. No other will receive it, unless the miracle of the miracle of the perfect contrition is granted by God for the mercy of that 
sought to, to help the sought to convert or to acquire the knowledge and understanding of the faith and, and leave these heretics where they are and not leave them altogether. But that's that's a miracle of its own, a very rare. That should suffice today. Yes, the church needs help, we need help, the Holy See needs help. But if people don't wish to help, uh, give it, God takes notice and He will punish this world as it is. We will survive, but those who deny us the help as we need it, including help in the work that needs to be done, obviously, including the Mass and all the necessary tasks and so forth because it's overwhelming, and continue the church and so forth. Hell. They will only have, be helping the devil to persecute the church, as is written as we have quoted from the Holy Scripture, about the woman that had to flee into the desert, and there the, the one is nourished, that's the church, is protected in safe place, and the time of the Antichrist become evolved, and people will be taught a lesson of their lifetime that to negotiate on their salvation with God according to their own will and, and fraudulent opinions, heretical opinions, does not pay. God will not be mocked. And he will punish those who offend him and in his in his breath, obviously. So let you suffice today. It is dogma divinely revealed outside the Catholic Church that means represented solely today by this holy apostolic see of Rome in exile. Outside the Holy Mother Church, there's absolutely no salvation. All heretics and all infidels, apostates, or schismatics, or enemies of the church, like the communist, socialists, atheists in general, and so forth, all, all atheists, so that's a heresy of heresy, all such unfortunate or uh, perverted souls, they will burn in hell and do burn in hell if they die in such a state of their soul. Do not be one of them. Divine punishment is near. <laughs>